Bernie Sanders recently penned an article for In These Times titled How Corporate Media Threatens Our Democracy with the subtitle This is a Crisis We Can No Longer Ignore. And in this article, he does a phenomenal job at explaining how corporate controlled media threatens democracy because it prioritizes what the corporations want as opposed to what people actually want and need to see and get informed about. So uh, I couldn't not share this. So he states, media shapes our very lives. It tells us what products we need to buy and by the quantity and nature of coverage, what is important and what is unimportant. Media informs us as to the scope of what is realistic and possible. When we see constant coverage of murders and brutality on television, Corporate media is telling us that crime and violence are important issues that we should be concerned about. Media is not just about what is covered and how, it is about what is not covered, and those decisions of what is and is not covered are not made in the heavens. They are made by human beings who often have major conflicts of interest. As a general rule of thumb, the more important the issue is to large numbers of working people, the less interesting it is to corporate media. The less significant it is to ordinary people, the more attention the media pays. Further, issues being pushed by the top 1% get a lot of attention. Issues at advocated by representatives of working families, not so much. For the corporate media, the real issues facing the American people poverty, the decline of the middle class, income and wealth inequality, trade, healthcare, climate change, etc., are fairly irrelevant. For them, politics is largely represented as entertainment. The quote, politics of entertainment approach works very well for someone like Donald Trump, an experienced entertainer. That kind of media approach didn't work so well for a campaign like ours, which was determined to focus on the real problems facing our country and what the solutions might be. For the corporate media, name calling and personal attacks are easy to cover and what it prefers to cover. Why is it that the mainstream media sees politics as entertainment and largely ignores the major crises facing our country? The answer lies in the fact that corporate media is owned by, well, large multinational corporations. These powerful corporations also have an agenda, and it would be naive not to believe that their views and needs impact coverage of issues important to them. Have you seen any specials lately as to why we pay the highest prices in the world for our prescription drugs, or why we're the only major country on earth not to have a national healthcare program? That may have something to do with the hundreds of millions of dollars each year that drug companies and insurance companies spend on advertising. And let us not also forget that the leading personalities we see on television are themselves, in most cases, multi-millionaires with very generous contracts. That does not make them evil or bad people, it just makes them very wealthy corporate employees who bring to their jobs the perspective that very wealthy corporate employees bring. In 1983, the largest 50 corporations controlled 90% of the media. Today, Today, as a result of massive mergers and takeovers, six corporations control 90% of what we see, hear, and read. Those six corporations are Comcast, News Corp, Disney, Viacom, Time Warner, and CBS. In 2010, the total revenue of these six corporations was $275 billion. In a recent article in Forbes magazine discussing media ownership, the headline appropriately read, These 15 billionaires own America's news media companies. No sane person denies that the media Media plays an enormously important role in shaping public consciousness and determining political outcomes. The current media situation is a very serious threat to our democracy. The very first amendment to our constitution guarantees freedom of speech and freedom of the press, the right of the people to express their points of view from the rooftops and to allow themselves to be heard. That is something I passionately believe in. Unfortunately, as A.J. Leibling wrote back in 1960, freedom of the press is guaranteed only to those who own one, and the people who own the press, radio and television stations, and book publishing and movie companies are becoming fewer and fewer with more and more power. This is a crisis that can no longer be ignored. And what he's saying here is really important because it's not just his opinion. This is backed up with political science studies uh, that illustrate the effect that media has on our brains. So numerous political science studies show that the media has the ability to prime people and get them to think about issues without actually mentioning issues. It has the ability to raise the salience of issues that we think are important. So if they think that terrorism, for example, is more important, they can get us to believe that it is in fact more important. And this is scary because we shouldn't have 
billionaires and multinational corporations influencing us. The media is supposed to be a check on government power. It's supposed to be basically the fourth branch of government. It's supposed to keep us informed about the actions of our government. But unfortunately, what the media does is it controls the narrative in the country. It, it controls political discourse. And that discourse, like Bernie Sanders rightfully points out, is often controlled by the wealthiest interests in the country. And it's frustrating because we saw how the media had a really harmful impact in the 2016 election. They basically had a media blackout on Bernie Sanders. And multiple political science studies have proven that if a media organization and if media just collectively wants to kill off the campaign of a candidate, all they have to do is not cover them. They don't have to smear them, even though they did try to smear Bernie Sanders. All they have to do is just not cover a candidate, and that campaign will die. And since they covered Donald Trump relentlessly and repeatedly, well, that elevated Donald Trump, that legitimized Donald Trump, and made the American people think that this buffoon was someone who was a viable presidential candidate. So they took someone who was unqualified and non-viable, and they made him viable. They legitimized him. Uh, and that was that was a disaster. So I think that what Bernie Sanders is saying here is incredibly important. And I'm glad that he's speaking out. We need to speak out about corporate controlled media. And look, even though it's the case that corporate controlled media, uh, it, it's good for people like me, like the Humanist Report and Secular Talk and the Young Turks, because it's elevating us. People are looking for alternatives. But at the same time, though, I'm more concerned about what's good for the country because if we actually have a mainstream media that does its job and calls out government officials when they're lying brazenly in front of our eyes, if they actually talk about issues that are important that would inform us, then I think that's a win for everyone. We probably wouldn't be in the political situation that we're in. You know, in some, this is a great article. I would encourage you to read the whole thing. I couldn't share all of it because it's really long, uh, but I'll put a link in the description box uh, because it, it's fantastic. Kudos to Bernie for calling out the corporate media and really explaining in a concise way the harm that they're doing. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.